Hey everyone, today is July 8th, 2023, and we're coming back to see if the beavers did something. I'm planning on yes. These roads are an absolute mess today. There are so many potholes from all the heavy log trucks combined with all the rain. Very, very bumpy road today. Worse than any other time we've been on this road this year. There's so many potholes and puddles. The road is just deteriorating so much with all of this year's rain. And I'm very curious to see if that bridge is still out where we have to keep driving through the river. I'm hoping it's fixed, but looking at the road, everything seems to still be a mess. Despite today being a sunny day, it absolutely poured last night. We got about three inches in just one hour. And the day before that was a perfectly dry day. But other than those couple days, it has rained almost every day in May and June here in Maine. Almost every day is rain. That's why these roads are just deteriorating so bad. Full of potholes. Potholes cannot really be fixed until we have a dry stretch of weather when they can grade them out. And the rain will just bring them right back. So rainy summers, the roads are a mess and you have to go pretty slow. Since I'm on these roads so often, it's almost impossible to keep the truck clean. A couple days ago, I spent an entire day cleaning every nook and cranny. I had to wash twice because dirt keeps coming out of cracks. I had to pressure wash underneath, dust everything inside. And today, it's going to be a giant mud again. These roads also driving on them, your wheel treads are picking up little pebbles and sand and throwing them at the frame. It's like sandblasting. So I've done this for years and every fall I have to get underneath with a metal brush and rust-oleum every part of the frame to keep it from rusting because the road salt will attack it after lots of off-road driving it takes away all the paint and starts rust. You can just, you cannot go fast today. I can't get faster than 20 miles an hour. These bumps are just really bad on this road today. And we have to drive about 50 more miles down here to get to our location today. That out bridge is about 35, maybe 40 miles. It's towards the end. If the bridge is out, I, it's actually a good thing. Well, I don't think it matters today. So today's a Saturday in July, and that means these roads are usually packed with tourists. In the summer months, that's usually a dreadful thing because that means they're gonna create giant dust storms, all the increased traffic. It was very dusty two days ago. It got pretty hot out here, but now that it rained, there won't be any dust. But with all these potholes and bridge out, it's unlikely we'll see many tourists at all. There's a couple tourists park here. This is a hiking trail coming up. The truth is most people are just not willing to take hours upon hours of potholes like that. And most people can't drive through a river when the bridge is out. So that means if the bridge is still out, we'll basically see nobody when we get to the job site. A lot of the tourists are driving tiny cars also, and that takes a ton of skill to use a small sedan on these roads without destroying it. Just hours upon hours of potholes. That's what we expect today. Usually these roads, when they're in good shape, you can go over 50 miles an hour. But today we're unable to even hit 20. The potholes are so abundant. Sometimes you try to zigzag around them, but you can't really miss them. There are just so many of them. Every other second you just hit some big potholes. There's a nice little smooth section, but how long will it last? Well, it lasted longer than I thought. Here's another smooth section. 
the areas where they built the road very nice are still smooth because it was able to drain the water away instead of pooling. Any little imperfection in the road is going to catch your wheels when the road is soft and make potholes. Once a little pothole forms, everyone splashing through it is throwing more and more dirt out of it, making it worse. Thirty minutes of potholes later, this is where we removed a beaver dam a few weeks ago, if you saw that video. Off to the side here, there was a beaver dam in the drainage ditch, and it appears to not be there anymore because the drainage ditch is now empty. Well, anyways, it was backing up and causing the water to cross right here, and that's what caused this big flood. People driving through the crossing water kept splashing more and more road out of it. Now it's a big dip where the water just simply cannot drain until they fix the road. Now, did beavers do this? There is a culvert pipe right here, and I also see water up here. Is it crossing because of it? Yes, it certainly is. We need to stop here. This water right in front of us is crossing, and we now need to back up and unclog this pipe. I gotta gear up, I still got sneakers on. This is our first place of the day. I'm just gonna back up here into this parking space. And we'll get to work. All right, everyone, I got the big high boots on, the rake and camera number two with me. At least this year is a very wet beaver season. The last couple of years have been dry. Beavers weren't very active. Last year, if you remember, whoever was watching my channel last year, it was so dry out that in the summer months, I believe we were going a month at a time without even posting a drainage video. It was just so dry, no issues happening. But this year the beavers are very active because it's been raining nearly every day for months. So this is where the water is going to discharge out of the pipe here. This side is visually feet lower than this side. This is, I think, a secondary beaver pond. They definitely don't live here. This water is so small. And it's backing up the ditch here and crossing over the road. So everything you see down there, those big puddles, that's going to drain for the most part. I hear a bullfrog in here. So this is probably gonna be a fairly easy job. This location usually is pretty easy. So we're gonna set up camera number two and go on and get in the water. Woo! All right, everyone. Camera number two's going. Just going around, getting all the spider webs out of the way. Water's pretty deep, and I see some stinky gas bubbles coming up. Ooh. My waves just went over the beaver dam. It's not that big yet. Wow, we were just able to push a good amount of it. Maybe this will be an easy one. It's pushing pretty easily. Ooh, that was solid mud coming out of that one. Oh wow, big amount just went through. You're gonna you're about to see it on the other side. Wow, I hear rocks tumbling. Wow, it just went through the other side. 
It may have got caught up a little bit. We'll get it when we get over there. I'm just removing some of the foundation, which is holding up a little. Got to get it down to the bottom of the pipe level. This will drain fast. There's not that much here. And the water will also clear up pretty fast. All right, water is now backing up into the pipe because of something that got stuck right at the exit. Let's get on um, over there to the other side of the road. Yep, it backed up a little bit because it just got stuck at the end. Wow, that's like almost an entire second blockage now. That's why, look at the beaver's head in there. That's like eight feet long. Like 10 feet. There we go. That's why it got stuck on, there's a giant rock here. Wow, you see how powerful that current is? Ho oh, ho, it almost stole camera two. It just moved a rock the size of a basketball. That's how strong the water was, but that's what the stick got stuck on. Awesome. I love the sound of the rocks tumbling. That's a good sound to hear. You can still hear rocks tumbling. That's gonna go on a little bit. So I'm thinking maybe the beavers live down here somewhere, somewhere downstream. <laughs> because see how the grass is all pushed over? This is from beavers walking in and out of the swamp, going across the road to plug that up. Yep. Walking down the road towards the actual flood, it's already going away. You can see the mark of where it just was, right about here. It's already receded back as much as it could. No longer crossing at all. You can see all the water right here now receding back into the ditch and it'll eventually go through that pipe. All the water from the edge of the road now is going right on into the ditch again. That muddy water is about to get over there. We'll probably beat it. We're about to see a big cloud go in. That filthy muddy water has not made it yet to the pipe. But I'm gonna leave you guys here for a couple of minutes. It's gonna happen very quickly. Look at all this oil and stuff right here in the water. Is that from leaky equipment going on the road or is it natural swamp oils that are just coming from rotting things? But we can still hear water moving rocks. So I'll leave you guys here for just a minute while I put the rest of my stuff away and I'm just gonna cut out the part until it immediately shows up. Oh, I already see some of it, the discoloration. I can no longer see to the bottom. It's mixing with clean water, so it's gonna take a little while to get more and more dirty. Let me look in the ditch, see if it's even gonna come. I think that's about it. It's getting kind of diluted as it's mixing with the rest of the water and the dirty water coming off the road it has just about run out. So that flood right there is inevitable until they do some grading. The beaver dam down here in the ditch that we removed last time does not exist. The beavers never built it back. If you remember, there was an excavator parked here two episodes ago. That guy did not get this beaver dam, but it's not causing a problem yet. But maybe we'll remove it next time. This is right here in the ditch. If they make it a little higher, it's gonna go onto this abandoned road and likely trickle out into the active road and start causing damage. All right, gonna get on the road.
That annoying beeping sound you always hear is the security system telling me somebody touched the car, but it's always me opening and shutting the doors. So this flood, we just got it to recede a good amount. Maybe in the sunshine today, it'll go away. Today, we have like a 70% chance of rain in the afternoon. It's only nine in the morning and it's already getting uncomfortable, mostly the humidity. It's not very hot out at all. We have just had oppressive humidity for weeks. Yesterday was cool. We dropped 20 degrees in like a two hour period when it started raining. That was pretty nice. It started off in like the 90s for the high and then it dropped very quickly. Just plunged. Uh, do we have a, another beaver problem here? These beavers are starting to get ridiculous. I definitely see beaver debris in the discharge end, meaning somebody unclogged it. We better pull over and look. The beavers are starting to get ridiculous. They're all about water storage. They obviously don't live at these tiny ponds. Look at all this debris. It either slipped or somebody unclogged it and it slid through. Let's look at the other side. Is it a blockage? Not necessarily. I'm gonna grab the rake. So visually, this is definitely low. Like the pipe settled incorrectly. But there's a good amount of flood in here. I just wanna know if I can touch a beaver dam. Yes, I certainly am touching a beaver dam. I'm gonna go shut the truck off and grab camera number two again. All right, everybody. I've never seen a blockage at this one before. This might not be doable. It might be too long and deep in the pipe. But we already definitely improved it, but. Look at the size of this stuff. This stuff is, if you can tell, hard to pull out. It's heavy, a lot of pressure. And it still doesn't seem like we've accomplished much. Oh, I got a good amount. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! 
It just keeps coming. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's still coming. Whoa. Wow, was that all of it? Yep, that's all of it. This pipe is not capable of being as efficient as it could be because of the angle. It's pitched incorrectly. Awesome though, a good amount of this water can now drain. I don't think I've ever had a blockage like that. Where I was able to just rip it out like a big rope. Now let's see what the other side's doing. That's the blockage from whoever did it last time. They let it slide through. I, I loosened that up, I could have let it slide through which would have been easier. But this was fun. Perfect, we're all done here. At least we got to work in the shade for that one. All right, this has already drained back at least eight inches and it's gonna drain back at least another foot until that pipe becomes not functional anymore. It was functioning when we got here. There's always gonna be a little bit going through, meaning the beavers can plug it up pretty easily. Big difference back in that little cove. And there's a hump in there. So they just, I honestly don't think it settled that much. I think they didn't even use a level or anything installing it. But that was fun. From end to end. That is, let me guess. 14 maybe 16 feet um nope that measuring tape only goes up to 16 feet the end of this piece right here where those branches end all the way to here is 16 feet so 17 almost 19 feet worth of trees were jammed in there by the beavers Wow. I guess I need a bigger measuring tape. All right, the humidity is starting to make me sweat now. We're gonna get back on the road. Let's go. The road has improved, there's not as many potholes in this area. The drainage is a little bit better, I guess. Who knows what we might find? We've never done one at that location before. Beavers are rapidly expanding this year because of all the rain. What the heck? You don't hug that side of the corner. And there's not even any holes over there. What is wrong with that guy? When you're driving on these logging roads and you're going around a corner, you always hug your side in case something else is around the other corner. A fully loaded log truck, if that were me, would not have been able to stop and that car would be in the woods now. 
People always ask me on these roads why I appear to be going so fast. That is because sometimes we are going hundreds of miles deep into the woods. And if I was going 20 miles an hour, do that math, I would not get there that day. Look at all that chocolate milk. I just turned around because I want to show you guys the bridge is fixed. There's no way that caravan would have got through here if it wasn't. So this is where we drove through the river last time. They, with the excavators, redid the whole river bank and everything. It was all grass, if you remember. They tore up all that grass. Hopefully they replanted it because that actually will stop it from pushing out even worse. So I want to get out and take a look for a minute. So, yep, they were in here with excavators. This was all placed here, you can tell. This is where we had to drive through twice. Once with low water, once with considerably higher water going through here. It looks like they made it way more difficult for next time this may happen. You see? My bottom out there, but I think I could get around right here, though. So the bridge looks higher, wouldn't you say? Excavator just grabbing onto this. The supports look pretty good, although... What's up with this? That support isn't even down all the way. Don't you think that's gonna be able to pretty easily move again? So were they just holding it with the excavator and they placed a little rock underneath there to straighten it out and called it a day? Because that still is very hollow underneath that block and I think that'll be a problem again fairly fast. Oh, yeah, it's definitely deeper the bridge now. If you remember last time we were up there looking down, there was a waterfall pouring over quite a bunch. They got rid of it, so yeah, so more water can fit under here. It looks like they dredged underneath the bridge quite a ways. That's a good idea. Although I still do not like the look of this support. I think that's gonna be a problem in the near future. But look at this going up to the bridge. We got like a staircase here. That's kind of cool to see. This might become a problem after a little bit or here. Because that's what happened before. The water got under the foundation eroding it. This made a sinkhole and I know I definitely drove over it a few times before it gave. Whole area just fell in with like four feet. I wonder if someone went over it fast enough to be lucky or they actually fell into that. So they did completely reuse the bridge. For some reason they did not install the guardrail again. But it's fixed. For now at least. All right, and we're out of here now. Continue on our way. It looks like this section of road was graded. It's way better than it was. This was like driving down a rocky riverbed, which they use underneath the dirt for a solid base. It basically washed away every bit of sediment, making it very uncomfortable to drive down. This whole section of road is fixed, but it's not gonna be perfect. It's impossible to make it perfect with all the rain we've been having. All right, everyone, we just arrived at a spot where there was a giant sinkhole from a failed culvert. Let's see if they actually replaced the culvert or just filled in the sinkhole on top of the rotting pipe. Definitely not a good job compacting there, but that's kind of an inevitable because of all the rain. But they could have put some sort of better compacting fill around it, like gravel. Let's inspect. No, it's the same pipe. Are you kidding me? But that looks kind of cool. That coffee colored water. Look at that. 
Yep, it's the same pipe. And this pipe, if you guys remember, I showed it to you, whole bottom of the pipe is rusted out, meaning as water passes through it, especially during rainstorms, it's pulling, eroding, and things on the edge are slowly going into it. Wouldn't be surprised if this is sinking right on into it. Big rainstorm, it's going to open right back up. They filled in a sinkhole without, cut, without even fixing the cause. You see all these ribbons? That was all put up by me. This road now is incredibly smooth. They fixed a lot of it. A lot of these pipes were replaced. This road was such a mess last time I was out here a couple of weeks ago. Now it's just perfect, this area. The drainage is perfect, so the rain is not even affecting it. Very smooth section of road. And look at the sky, is turning black. I told you it was gonna rain a lot today. Now right here was a big washout. They didn't really fix it yet. But they replaced this culvert. Well, no, they did not. They just dug it out and maybe replaced the inlet. That's gonna plug right back up. That was plugged by a landslide from the hill they logged. They logged it, nothing holding together the ground anymore. It slid into the pipe and it's just gonna keep happening. This area, I don't think they're done grading it yet. It'll just improve over time. But there was some dangerous drops. Yeah, they filled it in so it's not a sudden drop, but it still needs to be fixed. Like areas where the whole edge of the road just washed out. This pipe was, uh... Wait a second. I want to get out and look at this. That is a literal culvert up into the road. If that's new. Oh my gosh! Who is installing these things? It is brand new. And it's already out of the road less than two weeks later. Yeah, I was here two weeks ago. And I was showing you guys this metal pipe that was still functioning a little bit. And I was showing you how amazing the little damage it had to it was. But look at this. Brand new pipe. Hasn't even been in the road for two weeks. It's already destroyed by vehicles hitting it. But yet they continue to use plastic. Yes, I understand it's 100% not installed correctly. But if that was metal, it could take a beating from even the heavy log trucks before getting crushed. Any internal damage yet? I doubt it. Well, I can't see through it, but that might be, I think, because it's so dipped. 100% not installed correctly. It looks like the ground, because it's soft, heavy vehicles may have pushed down, which made it push back up. But why'd you put it in mud? It should have been in some better fill. Look at this, holes already right into it. Yep, already completely crushed and clogged. Look, no water can really pass through it except the little trickle you saw. Completely destroyed in less than two weeks. When are people gonna learn? The companies that make plastic pipes will tell you it lasts 70 plus years. That is before the plastic starts deteriorating. That does not mean it can be installed in the same situation as a metal pipe. A metal pipe can be hit, it can be buried shallow without damaging. And look at this road, I bet this just got damaged since they started repairing it, because everything else is repaired. And there's another crumpled pipe, I don't know why they didn't replace that one. All the machinery's gone for now, so they're not gonna fix it right now. That plastic pipe back there should have been a metal one, and getting hit by trucks like that would not have damaged it like that. The metal pipes and plastic pipes cost almost the same amount. The metal ones have about a 30 year lifespan, often longer out on these roads because you don't have road salt or anything. A plastic culvert can only last 70 years if it's deep in the ground, properly compacted, but all those years, it's gonna settle on that soft pipe. I do not believe that. That 70 years is when the plastic will start breaking down and deteriorating. That is not the lifespan. I would not trust a pipe like that. I would rather replace it every 20 or 30 years than having to deal with these crushed pipes that can't even survive one hard winter with frost heaves pushing and compacting them.
it makes zero sense that they keep putting these plastic garbage in here. And a lot of times when they're pulled out, just like that metal one, the metal one is rusty. It can just sit in the woods and deteriorate back into the environment with basically no impact because the galvanization's already gone. The plastic one is just gonna break down in the sun and shatter into smaller and smaller microplastics. You know, microplastics are almost in everyone's drinking water at this point because of that garbage. And it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse. They just keep using these plastic pieces of crap more and more for no reason. Not to mention the galvanized ones. The galvanization wears down. I've showed you guys so many times where the bottom of the pipe is shiny as if it was sandblasted by sediment passing through it. Even after that is removed, it's still gonna last a couple decades before it rusts completely through. While the plastic one, rocks can literally rip it just going through it pretty easily, breaking down the plastic on the inside. So, you should just avoid plastic pipes, but they keep using them, and it's just gonna keep on failing. All right, everyone, we are now arriving at our location. Is there going to be any flooding? It's been a few weeks since we've been here, and these beavers build back usually the same night we leave. Here's their upper beaver pond. That's why I have this in a playlist titled Lower Beaver Clogs. Um, I see some water in the road, but that's just because it rained last night. <gasps> Whoa! You guys remember this culvert pipe? Wow, they, uh, they actually replaced it. I was showing you guys this pipe that was like unrecognizable two weeks ago. It was so grown in with trees in front of it. Couldn't even find it. Wow, they replaced it. Maybe we won't have a blockage at all. Maybe they finally cleared and got rid of the beavers. I don't think so though. This pond looks a little over capacity. But maybe we got lucky and we don't even have to do any work here. The owner of this logging company is very nice. I almost went into the ditch backing up there. Most of these logging companies, they're very nice when you talk to them. And they really enjoy the things we do on this YouTube channel. I've never actually had any of the logging bosses get actually angry. All right, we're going to get out. This is very interesting. They did a lot of work here. All right, so this is another 10 miles or so beyond that crushed plastic pipe. I hope they didn't put another plastic one in here. The road's already very sinking, and hopefully it's not into the pipe. Hopefully it's just because there's mud. So this is very interesting. Now this beaver swamp has two pipes. And there's no water in here, so I'm thinking before we even look at that big one we usually walk inside to unclog, I'm thinking it's already unclogged because this is the same pond, which is usually right up onto the road. So yeah, they got in here, they dredged a little bit of it. It is a plastic pipe, unfortunately, but this one's actually deep enough. It may not be a problem for years, especially if this road gets a little bit of a chance to completely dry out. It might be pretty awesome. That was one of the company trucks going by just there. Look at all this fresh sediment. I bet if I stand in that, I'll sink pretty deep. I want to see. It looks like their wall has already kind of failed and collapsed down into here, which might be a problem. Those rocks can't be moved by us yet. Whoa, yeah, this sediment, look at this. It's like nothing. See, it looks like a sandy riverbed, but called Deep You Sink, and there's also stinky gases Wow, the whole beaver swamp is just empty here. We're gonna go for a walk, I wanna explore. Where I am now would usually be up to my waist. Got the nice water irises blooming. Oh, uh, it was an optical illusion, it did not fall into there. It looked like it. Yeah, from heavy trucks going over it, it's already a little disfigured inside, you see? Look in there. It's got a high spot, but it's not that bad. Not yet. Whoa, that is so deep right here. 
Yeah, we're gonna go for an explore in this beaver swamp and look around. I wonder if they relocated them all because it's kind of amazing there's nothing there. So for the past couple months, this has been a very enjoyable place I've been coming to to do uncloggings. We had the same problem a few years ago. They were trapped. New beavers showed up this year. Been making massive dams inside of this pipe. And wow, the excavator guy, he got in here and did some work. He moved all of our debris off to the side, opening this up. I see some sticks in here, but that might just be stuff that's left over. So the pond, let's see if it's high or not. Ah, uh, we got a beaver blockage anyways. They didn't get rid of them completely. So that this is telling us there might be a beaver dam between these two areas. We're gonna go out and explore that and figure it out. So how bad is it? Oh, that's simple. We'll get that one fast. That's a simple, simple blockage. And look at the dragonflies that are stuck in the spider's nest. He, that guy got at least four of them. That's a big meal for the spider. And this is this guy alive? Oh, uh, yep. I'm surprised he let me touch him. Dragonflies are like a fly. Their brain processes like 10 times faster than a human's. That's why it's so hard to hit a fly sometimes. So I was down here setting up camera number two. And a bunch of mosquitoes were nice enough to make themselves known. So I went back and quickly threw on some bug spray. Woo! Camera, camera number two, two is going, going now. So, these beavers clog this thing up sometimes very quick overnight. Get rid of this big spider web. What you see in there is not that old. It's only a couple days in the making, so fortunately the beaver trapper did not come here yet. But they know about it. And I think I'm gonna flag it again before we go to make sure. I never actually flagged it with physical ribbons. I just reported the spot. So yeah, this should be a quick one. See some water beetles. This one doesn't look that old. It would have been way worse if the excavator operator didn't come here. They didn't hit the pipe at all. They probably use like a big log to smash it through like we've done in the past. So let me set you guys up in the water. The water's more shallow than it usually is at this location. Just showing they didn't have much time to build back. Now we gotta destroy that spider web before we go in there. All right, let's get started. Let's go around, where's the spider? I'm trying to find the spider. He can build back his web. Oh, they're gigantic cave spiders. Oh, that dragonfly is like still half alive. Oh, we just saved his life. He was just tangled up. He flew away. That spider's going to be angry. See, this one's rotten, so we were able to just stick the rake right into it. A big one, heavy too. Woo. I think I want to get on the downhill side. I think I can tear this apart pretty fast. There's a lot of spiders today. Get out a whole root ball. What's that? Like a mixing, a plastic mixing spoon? More root balls. More rotten wood we were able to stick.
I thought I was going to go in there, so I'm going to zoom you guys back out while I'm not. This is a different type of dam today. This type of material is pretty easy to just stick and pull out. Less stuff we gotta pull out downstream, I guess. But either gotta come out here or downstream. Although the excavator made a lot of room for us. Is this another root ball? It's very heavy. I'm going home muddy today, I think. Not a difficult beaver dam, but a little harder than I thought. Now I have to get below it and start working on it down there. We got just about everything structural. Now we gotta go to the exiting end where it all just got stuck. Look, everything just stopped for a minute. Oh, it just let loose. Look at that. Awesome. It looks like it's just about gone. Yep. That new increased current 
Just ripped everything apart. Under tow is taking anything near the entrance. Wow. That was a fun one. Ah, but I got all soaked in that nasty water. Look at the undertow, it's moving debris, getting it out of here so beavers can't use it as easily. That one went real fast. That was a good one. 100% open. Maybe we don't have to do anything on the other side. Camera number two is in high ground. Yeah, we don't have to do anything. The excavator operator dredged it so much that all the debris Look, it's still moving, actually. It's just getting pushed downstream. We don't have to do anything. Although it might be fun to give it another push while I go down there. This is going real nice. I love it. Look at this. Nice. It's going a lot better than it was before. Pretty awesome. Let's get down there and move that and I'll grab camera two. Oh, there's a frog down there. All right, we got everything downstream wide open again. It was way easier to do it now than next time because it would just get more stiff. And next time we have two piles of stuff against each other. Now it's wide open. This can drain back nicely. I'm just gonna take a little break. I'm overheating a bit. Then we're gonna go explore that drain section of the swamp but the beavers will have that one plugged again too I'm sure of it I'm surprised the trappers haven't been out yet this has been such a problem but maybe they're not touching it because we're maintaining it we'll see how they deal with it if we don't come out for a whole month because I'm inevitably gonna have to do that in the fall Camera number two is going now. All right, this will be a fun time. We're gonna go walk around in the beaver swamp. It's very humid and getting kind of hot. 
I'm muddy and dirty. I feel gross. All right, let's take a ride into the drained beaver swamp. Whoa! If it doesn't feel like we'll get stuck in mud, look at this. Ram's horn snails all over the place. So many beached ram's horn snails. And there's baby frogs. There's one right there, looks like the ones we raised. Still has a tail. All right, are we gonna get stuck out here? I'm already feeling like I might get stuck if I keep continuing. That smells gross. Swamp farts. I just wanna see what is separating this from the other pond because I know this area drains back when we unclog that pipe when it's really bad. So there's gotta be a connection somewhere. I see a lot of moose tracks in here. Now that we're going up in here, I actually see rocks from the stream. So we won't be sinking as much now. Not as much sediment. So this is basically the beaver dam maybe from this. This water seems like it's coming from upstream where that upper beaver swamp is. That's where the lodges are. That's where they live. Yep, definitely coming from up there because I can see it. Let's go on a little walk. Another pretty muddy area. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting very stuck in the mud. So this is all typically underwater. All this grassland. Whoa, sinking way too deep and lots of gases are being put out. All right, this seems a little more stable, probably because of the grass growing in it. This looks more stable, entering the tree line, heading up towards where they actually live. There's the trickling stream, we're meeting back up with it. Gonna have to check for ticks tonight. Here's all the trickling water. So yes, we're going in the opposite direction, not from what we just drained, but this is where they live. Very uneven ground. Just got a little flying bug in my eye. Why are bugs attracted to eyes and ears? Are they trying to eat the fluid? There's another little beaver dam holding this up. And we have this beaver dam holding up a good amount of water. And I see a much bigger beaver dam right here, which is their pond. I can see their lodge where they live. So this is where the beavers come down at night from to clog those pipes. This is where they live, up in here. Look at all that movement. Tadpoles? I don't know. Yeah, they're half frogs. Froglets. So, this tree fell over because they flooded it. It's still alive, fell over one, two years ago, two years of ups, upright growth. So here's the big beaver dam. That's their lodge where they live, right back there in the middle. Let's see if we can get it a little closer. That water's like bright red down there. I'm on a rotting log. I'm gonna try to walk back through the woods maybe. There's lots of little baby frogs in here. The beavers created like a little frog sanctuary in here. 
Look at this tree, how it fell over and it started rooting up on top of the rock. I got a couple of horse flies buzzing around my head. So this, this had been here a few years. Look at the growth on top of it, strengthening it. So not a very deep pond, but that lodge is massive for such a small pond. It's like a whole island out there. I've showed you guys this pond in the past from the road, but I just wanted to follow the water up here. So this water is going to that small pipe, not to what we just unclogged. What we just unclogged is coming from a much bigger lake upstream that we've been to a couple, uh, couple of videos back. It's got a campsite at it. Now it looks like we can maybe walk around the back here. That's a really big tree stump from maybe even old growth. There's no more old growth out here. This is all owned by different types of logging companies. And it's a tree farm. 40 years gets trimmed again. So we're gonna find our way around. I'm gonna try not to go into the marshy area. And we're gonna try to walk across whatever structure they have separating the areas. Good amount of beaver chew marks. The beavers are the ones keeping these areas clear from vegetation. Where I'm walking now seems like sometimes moose go through here. I see their tracks. So it's fairly open. Still fairly open. I can tell things walk through here all the time. Swampy, squishy, probably more squishy when that pipe is clogged. There's a lot of debris up here. Big fallen tree. Can I get through it? Or do I have to go all the way back through the swamp? And I can walk over it pretty easily. Maybe. Looks like a whole blowdown. See if I can get through this without falling. If I fall, it won't be good. There's a lot of sharp sticks upright. Right. Can barely see what I'm standing on down here. What I'm standing on is already elevated feet off the ground. Here's a root ball. That's stable enough. This is not stable where this big rock is. Okay, I can stand there. All right. I'm on something very unstable. Now I'm back on a nice tree. So this looks like water is up inside of these little coves when it's clogged. I'm gonna, will this hold me? I'm not putting my weight on that. It's kind of rotten. I'm gonna go under it under all these. All right. Through here. I'm determined to actually see the dam. I've never been up here before. back down to some water. See some frogs jumping around. I'm already seeing little tiny dams all over the place, but I don't think this is much we can walk through. I'll go a little further though. Ugh. So this is like a channel they may have excavated the beavers 
they'll do that so they can safely go through a forest and cut it down and they can just hide into the canal if they see a predator. Ooh, a frog. I'm overheating so badly I'm becoming clumsy. It's the humidity, not the heat. So, that's the beaver dam separating it. It appears we were like 20 feet away from it on the other side of the bush. Let me just get up there. We gotta go down in this canal for head clearance, just getting underneath all this debris. Yep, we were literally 20 feet from it. This is the divide right here. And we unclogged that thing like less than 20 minutes ago and it did not drop that much yet. But this shows it's almost three feet below capacity. That's probably crossing the road when it gets up to that. So this is the divide from the tiny pipe. Everything that builds up here when that little pipe is clogged that it's replaced, it's coming from where they actually live. This bigger secondary pond, which it probably has another lodge I'm not seeing. Probably two beaver families right next to each other. So this is what's separating it. Everything here is slowly draining back into the swamp, going around to the pond that we just unclogged. So now I have a better understanding of how this works in here. So, any time in the past we saw the water in this other pond drop from this, it had to have been just seeping through the dam. The dam looks old and they probably don't use it anymore since... They probably don't maintain it anymore since there's water on both sides of it. It's kind of pointless, if you get what I mean. Alright, we're going to get one more look at this before we go. Don't expect more than a few inches so far. So this pond goes all the way back into that swamp, right around there. So this is basically a big peninsula. Ton of water going through. Pretty awesome. By tonight, this pond will be two feet lower. It drains pretty fast. It's not that big. And they'll be sure to have a dam back by morning. Looking good. I'm just not a hot weather person. I've been losing a lot of weight lately and it doesn't seem to help. I still really overheat when I'm in the sun. Get that air conditioning up. And I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. We might come back here in like a week or so, or maybe, like I said, maybe we'll let it go a month and see what happens. Because maybe that's why they're not taking the report seriously, because we're unclogging it like once or twice a week for the past couple months, and they're just not seeing it happening. But they should be seeing the giant piles building up on the sides, meaning it's being unclogged. Because whether I'm doing it or the logging company's doing it, somebody got to keep the road open there. So that answer I just said is not even valid. The debris evidence should tell the trapper there's a problem there anyways. So that's pointless what I even said now. I don't even think they've came out, to be honest. So, I guess we're not going to let it go a month. We'll just keep coming back and doing it. That was a fun one.